Can you live in the snow belt of Lake Erie and have a two wheel drive pickup truck? In today's video, that's exactly what we're gonna talk about. See, we got a little bit of snow today. They were calling for six to 10 inches. We didn't quite get that much, but we've had steady flurries all day long. Does it make any sense to own a two wheel drive pickup truck in the snow belt of Pennsylvania? That's right, we're in the Lake Erie snow belt of Northwest Pennsylvania, and I do own this two wheel drive Ford Ranger. So this video might help you answer the question, can you have a two wheel drive truck in an area that gets snow? Let's talk about it while we take a drive. Well, it is negative temperatures out here today. We just came out real quick here. You can see I'm not bundled up for the cold weather but I wanted to see if the truck will start in this really cold temperatures. This is our 2010 Ford Ranger. It's been sitting for five days now without running. The first question will be, can we even get the door open? Talked in a previous video about needing those gutters above doors and vehicles today. Okay, no problem there. You can see the ice lines down the truck. Make sure the wipers turned off so that it doesn't kick the snow out at us. We do have beeping, that's a good sign. Take it out of gear. Turn the radio off. There we go. Get some of this snow brushed off so that when I have to go to work tomorrow, if the weather is okay to drive this two wheel drive truck, we'll drive it. See, there's a line of crusty ice here. We'll let the defroster go to help thaw that out but you never want to leave a whole bunch of snow on the windshield like that turn the defroster on I've actually heard of people where their front window has basically shattered you know cracked the whole way across or splintered without falling in because of the layer of plastic in between when you've got all that cold of the snow and ice and then all the heat of the defroster if you don't remove the big pile of snow you can cause that problem of a Cracked or ruined windshield. It's also good if you can get these air louvers cleaned off a little bit. And then the windshield washer sprayers, but we'll let the engine run a little bit to warm up before we scrape at those. You can also see my wiper is completely frozen down. The defroster will help relieve that problem also. in the wintertime than what I do in the summertime. 
So on days like today, there is really no problem driving what I call the little truck, the two-wheel drive Ford Ranger, four-cylinder, five-speed. This is a 2010 model. Now I have a lot of experience driving in snow and I have a lot of experience driving a standard. So that helps with driving in snow. The other thing I have is the F350 four-wheel drive, which if the roads are really bad, that's the truck I drive. Or if I'm going to work in the morning and they're calling for lots of snow during the daytime, that is the vehicle that I'll drive that day to work so that I can make sure I get home safely. Today's trip, I'm just running out to Home Depot, pretty short little trip. So I'm going to do that and uh, we'll talk along the way here. But you can see these roads are fine, especially as long as you have winter tires and you're prepared to drive in weather. It is still snowing, so let's say we're at Home Depot for an hour. There could be covered roads when I came out. And it's really just an experience thing. I know I had a friend when I was younger, he had a two-wheel drive Dodge Dakota with a 318 V8 engine, lots of torque, lots of power, but he could take that two-wheel drive truck just about anywhere. In fact, I've often said that a two-wheel drive truck in the snow handles better than a four-wheel drive truck driving in two-wheel drive. So you'll see here, I'll put a clip in of in the driveway. With the F350, a four-wheel drive truck, if I just leave it in two-wheel drive, the front end is so heavy and the back end is so light that it spins a lot easier. It's a little bit harder to control than this two-wheel drive truck. back into some deeper snow it's actually easier to pull out with this than it is with the four-wheel drive truck operating in two-wheel drive leave a comment down below if you found that same thing if you've had both a four-wheel drive and a two-wheel drive truck that it seems like the two-wheel drive truck does way better in two-wheel drive than the four-wheel drive truck does in two-wheel drive so I've grown up driving a standard or a manual transmission vehicle I've got a lot of experience in summer and winter, but that winter experience is pretty helpful to understand, like, let's say we thought this intersection was slippery, we would just leave it out of gear in neutral and slow down using the brakes rather than trying to gear down for the intersection. The same thing actually in an automatic transmission, if you're going down an incline and it's really slippery, you're actually better off to put the transmission in neutral and just coast down that hill using the brakes than to leave it in drive or gear down. Because either leaving it drive or gearing down will still have that transmission pushing forward. If you gear down, you can actually cause the back tires to lose traction going down a hill and then you'll slide more out of control than if you had just put the transmission in neutral and used your brakes to slow down on slippery surfaces. The other thing you can do with a standard transmission vehicle is shift a little earlier 
so that you're not getting in the power band of the engine and causing those back wheels to spin out. So you'll see when the light turns green here, what I'll do is I'll shift a little sooner than I would need to. We'll just go ahead and put it in second right now so that we're not getting all that torque to the wheels that could cause them to spin out. So I'm not letting the RPMs get much above two before I shift. I'm not climbing a hill or anything, so I don't need all that extra power before I shift. The other thing you can do in a truck, whether it's two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive, is to put a little bit of weight in the back. So what I often do in the winter time for the Ranger is get some tube sand, and that serves two purposes. One, it is 70 pounds a piece of weight in the back, and it's also grit. If I would be stuck somewhere and need to get some grit under those rear tires, cut one of those tube sand bags and throw a little of that sand grit on the ground in the area I'm trying trying to get to and that'll help you get some traction. Well, Home Depot didn't have what I was looking for. I was looking for another type of pellets, wood pellets for the pellet stove, because I'm making a video in the future about the different types of pellets and the burn time difference, the amount of ash difference, the price difference. See the nice thing about the Ranger, even though it's a little bit of an older vehicle, it does have the traction control. So you can see the little light lights up there if I start to spin. But to answer the start of the video question, can you live in the lake effect snow area with a two-wheel drive truck? I have a lot of experience and I would say I would not have this be my only winter vehicle. You know, when you live in an area where you can get six to ten inches or more at a time, it's good to have a four-wheel drive vehicle or an all-wheel drive vehicle. But having said that, there are a lot of days between November and April that are not snow covered roads and they're not predicting snow. So even though this is a two wheel drive truck, I drive it year round because there's so many days that it's perfectly fine to drive this throughout the winter months. And it saves me mileage on my big truck and it saves me fuel because if you haven't seen it, I did a video about my 165 mile daily commute and the mileage I get in this truck. So I'll put a link to that up above on the screen. But any day that I can drive this safely is a day that I'm saving wear and tear on my big F-350 and I'm saving fuel use. I'll say one other thing about this little truck in the winter time. The heater works really good. It's such a small area here in the cab that when you turn the heat on, it takes very little time with a little four cylinder engine to heat up the cab of the truck. Usually I end up during my drive turning the fan to number one and adjusting the temperature down because I just get overheated here in the little truck. Which I'd much rather be a little bit too warm than a little bit too cold and I can adjust it. 
down as necessary. As I was leaving today, Jennifer said, why would you take the little truck? And I said, I'm making a video about driving two-wheel drive vehicles. She wasn't thrilled that on a day where it is snowing, I'm taking the little truck out. But I wanted to be able to do this video, you know, because a lot of people ask, what's the sense in having a two-wheel drive truck in the wintertime in an area that gets a lot of snow? I wanted to show that, yes, you can drive in some snow with a two-wheel drive truck properly equipped with winter tires. We have the metal studs. You can put weight in the bed, tube sand. I like to slide that towards the front so that if I ever were in an accident, it's not uh, catapulting forward from the back of the bed towards me. But yes, a little truck like this, two-wheel drive, five-speed, is an okay vehicle as long as you have a secondary plan like our big four-wheel drive truck in an area like this. Thanks for watching. If you found this video informative and entertaining, please give us a big thumbs up down below. Leave those comments if you have experience in a snow area driving a two-wheel drive truck or if you know someone who's had a two-wheel drive truck and done just fine or if you've had the opposite experience, thought you could get by with a two-wheel drive vehicle and it didn't quite work out for you. You know, if I'm in a four-wheel drive truck and for one reason or another I end up in the slush off to the side, I can probably just put it in four-wheel drive and pull out of the ditch if I need to. If I'm in this truck and I get in the slush and pull it into the, the ditch, I'm probably not able to get out very easily on my own. Thanks for watching. Hopefully, we'll see you again the next time.